for. <laughs> yeah, we have indeed. All right. Welcome to Teacher Teaching Teachers. It's Chris Sloan and me, and we're going to set up a journalism. I don't even know if you want to call it a journalism group. Uh, well, we can talk. change it, right? Or Yeah, so I set one up um, okay. half an hour ago. But <laughs> and, yeah. then, and then we're going to talk about um, sort of big picture. Chris, you started making a couple of uh, writing partners. And I started making one for sure today. Oh, also um, that, that, right. Use it and I want yeah. to, um, you know, like one big thing would be trying to teach kids the difference between news and opinion, you know, like editorial and straight news story. So, uh, that, uh, that's one goal. Um, okay. Um, so I, I just started by doing a news editor, um, thinking partner. So is this going to be for your journalism class? Or... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, tell me what, tell us again that you're, you're going in for meetings starting Monday. Monday. Yeah. We start. Days? It's like crazy. This Monday, okay. we are starting back in our, um, you know, professional development week. And then the Monday after that is our first day. Okay. Yeah. So back at it. Let me, um, maybe I'll share screen because who needs okay. to look at our faces? <laughs> uh, is that fair? Yeah, okay. So here's one of the things. Um, so since we've talked, I think it happened, it happened at the end of June. All anyway, right. Um, there was a camp that Kylie did around the writing your future. Okay. And I'm pointing um, to, to the yeah, and I definitely want to do that again with my um, AP language. Um, AP English students are going to do that one. Okay. So, and and we did it on Youth Voices last time. I think so, yeah. Yeah. And so everything's been transferred over here, sort of tested in that two weeks. Uh, uh. Um, but so... We also might use this as a, a model of sorts for okay. for the um, for the journalism group or whatever we call the group in the end. Okay. Okay. Marina, hello. Hey, Marina. Hi, Hi Chris. So we're talking about setting up a journalism group. It's oh, fun. Fun. Okay. You teach journalism too, Chris? Yeah. Uh huh. Oh, cool. So how many kids do you have in that class? Um, let's see, well, there's two sections with maybe about like 18 in each is typically what it is, 15 to 20. Okay. So in this group, let's just, let's just start to use this like a template, right? We're going to need, you, you'll see there's, I, I put up an, an icon, but you, you can change that. We're going to need something, some text here. Okay. To describe what the script is about. Okay. We need four examples, to samples to play with, three or four. Okay. Yeah. Right. I already have an example. You already have a couple. Story. Yeah. yeah. And maybe maybe some good ones and some less finished ones. Yeah. Yeah. I have one of each so far. Okay. And then these categories, if they work for you, can work. So, but, so... What you played with today was like does everything sort of at once. And there's some advantage to that. But what we did last year, you actually did a lot of the work around it with templates on Youth Voices. And what Kylie did which is to take Jess Early's stuff, uh -huh. her research. So this getting started one comes out of her research. It You make a list of ideas brainstorm a list and it pretends to be a writer and and ask questions that, that a good writer would be asking about that topic okay uh, it, it does a think aloud for, mm -hmm. for okay. three of your topics and then says now you go ahead and do it the improv teammate is one that um elliot did um what is um elliot is his last name sorry uh from west virginia i'll think of it in a second oh terry uh, Terry Elliott, yeah. 
he actually made this one and I kind of messed with it a little bit, but it's not much. It What's nice about it is it gives you one paragraph, right? It's a, a very quick, uh, um, it gives you some quick feedback. So that's why it's over here in the early stages. And then these tutors fit with Jess Early's notions of sections of the at, of the college admissions essay, right? And I think you use some of these as for sure. That's that's what I did those four last year for sure. Mm -hmm. So, so as you're as compared to what you did, you know what you played with this afternoon. Um, these, like you, even have a lead, like the effectiveness of my lead. In right. Yeah. yeah. This would split it out and. Okay. And make it right, but <laughs> there's a problem with that because they get to be too many. So having a chart like this that they they can refer to is probably useful. Okay, I think we're finding. I'm making all these arguments. It's, it's really a dialogue we're trying to interview, but so interrupt me, please. The um and then these the say back the one two three four should split them up somehow. Yeah, the first four here. Mm -hmm. are, are all from Peter Albo's notion of peer review. Okay, yeah. So so th these are ones that are every group has. And on the home page, there's a list of those. Okay. Um, over to the right. Imagine audience is one that we played with a month or two ago. Uh, and what it does is you describe, well, you, well, that was the yeah. college admissions uh, reader, right? That was yeah, but we we generalized it, mm -hmm. and so, and you could use it in journalism too, I think. I mean, you you've talked about stakeholder, right? Thinking about yeah. the stakeholder. Uh -huh. So you could describe a stakeholder, and it would it would it would become that stakeholder, right? Okay. It's kind of like an extreme or more detailed version of the improv. So it, it, we tell it to be a, an actor who can act somebody's part. <laughs> and, okay. it, and it actually so acts a part. My student writes a news story, let's say, well, I mean, I think that probably would work better for opinion stories, what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, okay. And then there's probably some kind of alternative perspective thing well, I, I can, I mean, I, I use it myself all the time. You know, I'm writing about our process here. Uh -huh. um, and I make up a teacher who's overwhelmed and doesn't care about AI. And, you know, I just sort of describe what that teacher's like. And then I have that teacher give me feedback on the work. <laughs> okay. Right? Okay. So it's an interesting process, I think. Okay. Um, so like in my journalism setting if students write something and they could do something like i am the principal you know here's my thoughts on your thing or i am a new student at your school here's my thoughts on your thing right yep yep mm -hmm. but they would have to describe that person the more you the more descriptive you get the better the actor is right okay <laughs> yeah but that's what you do in the prompt right uh that's no what the, that's the what prompt, the person writes in the box it's what they write in the third box, right? Okay. Yep. Not their question box. Um, and then the paragraph decoder is something we did from the very beginning. I don't remember back in January 23 uh -huh. with some researchers who, so anyway, it gives you a summary of the paragraph. Um, I, I'm, I'm revising all of my work using this, uh, that I've, I'm preparing for this using this. So it gives, it first gives me a, a key sentence from my paragraph. It then lists what it sees as the keywords and then, and defines them for me. And then it gives me a summary in terms of a paraphrase. And then a, so a, it's a, what the paragraph says and what it does. It mm. gives me those two things. Mm -hmm. So then, so what it does is it really helps me think about that paragraph, but it's very sort of tedious work, I gotta say. Mm. <laughs> not everyone's gonna love doing it. And you might not want to do it for the whole thing. Like, 
I'm having difficulty with this paragraph. So that's there. And then the outlining tool, Marina and I just used it yesterday with some um, pre-service teachers on some writing they're doing. It gives you three outlines from three different perspectives, like chronological. Like it, it takes your writing and kind of mixes it all up and then says, hey, does this make sense? You know, what do you want to do with this now? Okay. Right? So that's there. And then spelling, grammar, and paragraphing does that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, in my in this particular group, the journalism thing, the spelling, grammar, and paragraphing tool would also be, or I would want something that would be um, journalistic style and adherence to like the um, hmm. Associated Press style book, you know. And that the little thing that I tested out actually did kind of, it seemed to have an idea of what the Associated Press style book was. Okay. Yeah, we um, should. Um, but again, I don't trust that, though. I mean, again, I said this before we came on, we recorded. Like, AI, you never know what AI is going to do. It might do it. We, so you got to put in there the, the, the very specific things you want it to rely on. Yeah. And I mean, I checked it and it was it was accurate. Um, All right. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so here's the thing. This is this is the this is for this genre, right? Right. You're you need to kind of replace. So let me go back to the home page. Well, to, let's. So I'm just show, here on the right side. I made I made a list. Uh -huh. You see, of the ones that everybody gets. Uh huh. And then you need to think. Okay, what's not there? Like you just did. I, you know, the journalism. Yeah. Thing. And here's the group, by the way. <laughs> now, do you want to call it journalism? Do you want to call it something else? We can think about that. Right. Okay. Um, what do you call your class? It's called new media, but um, it's media production. But I mean, this is pretty much going to be text is what I'm going to use this for. Okay. So journalistic writing is another way to say it. Because I'm not going to use it for, you know, judging their video production or their, you know, podcasts. Well, maybe podcast text. I take that back. Can um, I, but can I ask like why? <laughs> what's that? Uh, you, can we push the envelope on that? Like, you could up, you could they could absolutely upload a video and annotate yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Analyze it. Well, the bigger um, thing that's on my mind right now is there's there's different um, I don't know genres maybe like you know um, there's expectations for a I news like that story. word. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, right. There's for a news story and there's different expectations for an opinion story. Right. And then like, you know, a human interest kind of feature story. It's kind of the big categories. Mm -hmm. And so I wouldn't want it to apply opinion rubric or whatever you want to call it, opinion expectations on a new story, definitely. So those are headings. Those are things that strike me as like I need, uh, there would be a writing partner that would look at a piece of text differently depending on if it were a news editor or an opinion editor or a lifestyle editor. I don't know. Gotcha. So in the, in the college essay thing, we're I'm just listening and at, thinking, go ahead. Yeah. It's all one genre, you know, it's a college essay genre. Right. But I'm talking about, I need something that would definitely distinguish between news and opinion. Like that's a pretty big deal that a lot of us in our society seem to be not too clear about. Um, so, so you're saying you might want two different groups. Well, I don't know if I need two different groups. You and I had this conversation before you went to Ireland too. I don't know if you remember, yeah. like you were looking at it and say, oh yeah, these look like genres and that doesn't look like a genre. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I, I, I just started 
making more groups. So that's why. Well, no, couldn't I? Couldn't there be just different editors in this group? You know, like there are different mentors. Sure. Uh huh. So there's. Can, so if, I, I think of them as uh, editors on a desk in an old newsroom. So like, you know, there was like a that. news editor, there was a sports editor, which is essentially could, there's definitely a news and there's an opinion. Definitely. Those two desks were different, like located different in a newsroom, different places kind of thing. Now, so, so each of those has leads, uh -huh, but they're different. Each of them needs descriptions and conclusions. But would they be somewhat different? The I'm leads, um, I, I mean, somewhat different, but I mean, you just, no, leads, a lot of leads are like, you know, a quote lead works in a opinion story or in. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, they would be a little different, I suppose. So we're just, and we're going to work pretty fast here. Marina, I don't mean to yeah. leave you out, out there. Jump in anytime you want. No, I'm, I'm, I'm listening. I'm looking at you, you are. too, yeah. though. Okay, good, good. So, so Chris, one of the things, so just visually, right? Yeah. There's this section here, writing partners available in your You could have um, opinion writing partners, and you could have news writing partners, right? Uh-huh. And some might be the same, but some might be different. And we could just copy this block, or you could just, or you're, I don't know. Or are they enough the same that you don't need to? I don't know. Yeah. We'd have to test it, I think. Yeah. What are you thinking? Um, well, the getting started thing seems to be the same in, in any journalistic mode or genre uh and then the impromptu tutor probably those are things to help people kind of think through their idea right and then the composing thing okay lead but you don't think you don't think um somebody who's writing an opinion article writes even brainstorms differently um <laughs> Well, actually, I mean, to compound matters, you know, I can write a news story and then have a separate opinion story about that same thing, <laughs> you know, that, okay. that wouldn't be objective, you know, it would be subjective. Uh -huh. um, it would rely a lot on, you know, a news story would rely a lot on quotes and primary sources, whereas an opinion story relies more on, you know, like my point of view and an argumentative structure as opposed to an expository structure. How do you feel about keeping them separate? And then if they end up coming together, we'll, we can do that? Yeah, um, I mean, they could be yeah. separate. Uh, one of my thing, you know, is I'm trying to get them to, you know, be clear that there are different expectations for each thing. So maybe, you know, different writing groups. I just don't want to make it harder for them to use the interface. It's like... I know. I get it. Um. So, I mean, opinion writing shares a lot of traits with open letters. Right. That's the one group we don't actually need, probably, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah. Um, so we could change letter. this. We could change this to opinion and make yeah, or, this one news. Yeah. yeah. Or, you know, argumentative mm -hmm. is also what it is. Hmm. But definitely, you know, I look through the C three WP, and that doesn't quite work for like. Tell me, tell me why? Yeah, what's? Uh, it's been a while since I looked okay. at this. Oh right. uh, well, it was. Oh, uh, it's big on um. You know, like it I'm seems sorry. to be going toward like a certain idea of like a claim evidence. Mm -hmm. explanation which is good yeah but but it's not how you teach news opinion 
Well, not, I mean, opinion writing. Um, it's It strikes me, when I read it, it strikes me like the end result is this essay, and I could be wrong, because uh, it's been a while since I looked at it, and maybe didn't look at it carefully enough, but who's the audience for this? Um, they actually encourage kids to find you know, local newspapers and places to get their work okay. published. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I will have to, I mean, I'll look at that right now, I guess. Okay. Um, and I haven't, yeah. Um, trying to find this. So there's a of, misspelling, by the way, on the where's that on the argumentative writing. Yeah, the third bullet point effectiveness is misspelled. Thank you. But um, okay. Hmm. So. Yeah, maybe I could make this work too. Uh, now, I I don't I, I probably should have those you know them listed differently. This is an earlier version, but if you scroll mm -hmm. down, see where this assumes, and maybe we need to rethink this, or we could re we could use this as an excuse to rethink it. This assumes that there's a lot of peer review going on does that mm. happen in your new journal new media class yeah yeah okay so it what it does is it it gives a first read around response mm. and then there's this notion that's read again and it gives another response and that time there's more attention to the claim and the sources and the multiple perspectives mm -hmm. right? yeah huh. And then the third thing takes, and this is what you were doing, sort of a rubric, it takes, um, I really need to get these out. Anyway, so anyway, the, um, there are eight criteria, mm. and it, it looks at all eight criteria and chooses two that could be improved the most. So maybe your claim is weak. Right? And, and so the rest of these, you sort of select and say, oh, I don't have enough sources. Let me work on that. You get more feedback based on what the rubric tells you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's a whole sort of plan back here that's not obvious. <laughs> and then this, the, these four things come from a book. Harris, I think is his name. We can, it's all here. I just need to look it up. Wait. Yeah, the book Those, is called How to Do Things with Text. That's the illustrating and authoring and extending and countering tools. Right. Okay. Hmm. Now, The yeah, I mean, there's a lot ahead. of crossover, yeah. All right. But there, that's great. And if you could, nobody's using this, right? So this mm -hmm. is just, just this is just uh, kind of an abstract. So if you could make it real, that would be great. Yeah, I mean, I anyway, see yeah. one difference might be, as I recall, the citation teammate was probably given people and I'd have to look like um, advice on MLA formatting and that uh, kind of thing. I don't think it does. I think it, I think it's. Or what do you? Well, let me not go there. What What do you want it to do? Well, just check for like attribution. Um, so I mean, this journalistic style is like some quote needs to be identified. Are all quotes identified? So the question there is, can you tell the difference between writing that belongs to the writer and writing? That? So, yeah, I mean, that's still a valid question. Okay. Oh, you're looking at the prompt? 
I am. Yeah, I'm looking at. Um, sorry, I'm looking at the splash page for argumentative writing. The C three W. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's that's what's in the prompt. What you were just okay. reading, right? Yeah, I mean, really, what I'm talking about is argumentative writing. Um. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Rather. Than so what I haven't done there yet is what I've done in the other groups, and I don't know if this makes any difference to you, but I think you should be able to click on and see quickly what that writing partner does, right? Um, let, me, let me explain what I mean. So, for example, if and I can do this, it's, it would be pretty quick. I'm back in the um, college admissions essay, mm -hmm. right? So if you go to so what, I click there, you can see the so what to, tutor, mm -hmm. and see what it does. I thought it went somewhere else. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Um, there's a page where I can, well, I usually go to the edit page or duplicate page to look at the prompt, but. I know, but okay. here it is that way, but I don't know why that's. Interesting. Sorry. <laughs> I was going to say something. I'm going to show you and try to figure out. There is a, a kind of smart thing we did, but it's not. Okay. So watch this. But, but, but it's not, it's not evident there. And maybe we just need to change the link. Sorry. Watch. If you go to Ask AI and I go to the So What Tutor, it's in Tutors. Uh, where is it? Was it? Did we put it in? Oh, yeah, we did. So Kylie wanted us to reorganize these, and I think it's smart too, but not everything got reorganized. So this is in a use. So the Subot Tutor is here, right? Mm -hmm. And then you can click this link here. Uh -huh. But maybe, so this is the page, I think those links you go to, which is better, I think. It gives more information. And mm -hmm. it, so you could then read through the this and say, you know what, I want to change this. Quickly hit duplicate and, and, and make your own version of it. Mm -hmm. So if I did that with the argumentative essay ones, you could do that. That that mm. would be easier for you to plan. Do you think? I'm, yeah, I think so. I'm just trying to. Think. I think it would be easier, probably, to adapt the C3 WP stuff. Um, there. So the news writing stuff, um, I will kind of. Well, so remember... news writing is is that okay to be a category there on the main page? Yes, we're, I, I want to make a group there. I, okay. I'll tell you, there, there's a, um, just to give you some sense of what else is happening, because it might help. There's a, you know, there's, I'm still trying to pull together the debate stuff that Aditya is working on, uh -huh. the eighth grader. So that's one group. But then another group is there's a um, PhD student at Drew, who is doing her PhD as vignettes. <laughs> so she wants to do a vignette group, um, which I think is a nice idea. Mm -hmm. It's um, It has a UDL focus also. Uh, uh -huh. so she's neurodivergent herself and wants to tell her own story and have kids tell their stories. So there's, it's, it's a specific genre, genre. And you'll see, I think since, um, Greater Wisconsin, Greater Madison Writing Project has played with this, I believe. Mm -hmm. So there's that too. Okay. So anyway, so so I think I don't know about open letters. I, I'm just, I'm I'm throwing this out here. I don't, that try to not answer your question, but to try to think with you about it. Well, I think um, open letters are a powerful thing that, you know, youth should do. Okay. And I think this, I believe, is good. Um, I think that news writing is, it falls into that big category of things people should know how to do. 
I think the college essay thing for sure uh, mm -hmm. makes sense. And then argumentative writing, you know, that covers a lot of the writing that high school students are asked to do, but mm -hmm. also civically maybe what they should do. And play, by the way, is Marina's uh, development. Okay. Yeah, so Marina, I worked with a student um, this summer who's, I think, maybe a second grade teacher, but she would be great um, to maybe work with you. She's only in like maybe her second year of teaching, but she um, already was like uh, magic school certified, if there's such a thing or, you know, like she went right. through enough. Yeah, she went through enough to kind of train other people. So my point is, like, I think she's really interested in AI and kind of being a leader in her district uh, along those lines. So, mm -hmm. and she lives in Michigan. So um, she'd be a good person to connect with if she can, if she can find the bandwidth to do it. And I think she'd be interested. She's pretty good. Hmm. So I'll reach out to her. Um, okay. Marina and maybe connect. You think second grade though? But I think sure. so. But the, the reason I think it might be interesting for Marina is that she's, obviously interested in helping other people yeah yeah that's and right. kind of being that's a tech nice. leader in her world there that's cool um by the way who certified uh never mind yeah i mean <laughs> who certified magic school but i but i have the same right. question and have always had the same question about google and about ISTE and everyone else sure like, who, cer who certified them yeah <laughs> anyway <laughs> so just to say um so we could call this news writing instead of journalistic maybe. or okay i mean yeah. it could be journalistic writing uh, well no i think news writing is more specific i think that's helpful to make yeah because it... i mean it is a real life skill to be able to write a press release or to write a news story or oh that's a, a nice but that See how you're already expanding the uh, genre, right? Mm -hmm. um, press release is a news story. Hmm. Sure. I mean, it's I mean, it's your organization's thing that you're putting out there. So you could make it. You could. Could you? Or maybe you have written already. Make a description of what a news story is. Yes, so, and we'll put that, that in. Is, we'll I think that that's in. pretty well defined in that thing I was putting together today. In the in the uh, writing partner. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right. I think we've made some progress here. I, yeah. I, I For sure. To, yeah. Or what? Um. I think what you want to do just to make this a little more explicit is like, oh, take a look at, even though I don't have it, let, let me look at it to make sure I know what I'm talking about. I'm going to make this easier for you to do, right? But two, this is a weirdly named one. I think it's called two of eight. It's called two of eight. Here it is. Okay. So, by the way, there there are. I mean, if you the other thing to think about is like Mark Dijic and um, in Greater was um, Greater Madison um, has some teachers who use C three WP. And they were looking at writing partners this summer and wanted to look at that also. So if you can like start making it alive, right? Okay. It would be easier to draw those people in in some way to kind of be with you. But um, I just want because you were using a one to use a rubric, there okay. is a rubric attached. It's not really attached, but this is all I did with it, right? Um, let me just see. Yeah. Yeah, I was looking at it on my screen too. Yeah. Okay. So in their case, they just right. So here's I just uh, I don't think okay. I don't know if they use the numbers. I uh, I maybe have added those, but 
So it just repeats the sentences and makes a list of them, right? But then, and this comes from their materials. Um, it 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 analyzes the text, and then the idea is that it's too much to try to, to do with all those all eight of them. Okay. So the, the six of them that I'm better on, leave me alone. I'll focus on two of them, and then revise based on that. Uh huh. So that's sort of what this prompt does. Right? Okay. And it does a pretty good job. It gives you, oh, I think there's a paragraph that says, yeah, here it is. Choose two revisions. Rate me on a scale. Uh -huh. And then only show me. And then, but then if you ask it to show me my rating on all of them, it'll give you another version, another response, and it'll show you all of the rating. Mm. Um, so you could make it a, ver you your the rubric idea you had, this could be a version of that, right? You can uh -huh. just duplicate this and kind of rethink it. Uh huh. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. Um. Do you want to um, hear? Go ahead. What else well, are you thinking? No, well, uh, I was just thinking that. Um, it's also kind of bleeds over into AP English language writing as well. What does? The... Well, the C3 WP stuff. Uh huh. Which is good. I mean, it's a different class. But that's a genre too, right? That test. Yeah. It is absolutely a genre. Yeah. Yeah. So, and you've done amazing work around that. So we should think about that. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, um, you were going to say something else. Yeah. Let me ask you. Let me let me push the uh, business question here, <laughs> and 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 for the reason of it, do you think in your school you could or could be? Yeah, you know, I've asked you this before. Could be ready to say, "Hey, I've been using this. You know, versions of this we've been developing over the last year and a half." I think we're ready to kind of pull you in. It, it'd be great if we could get a cohort together, um, pay pay for this, and then you know subscriptions for it, and then we use this. Maybe not in the whole school, but maybe all the seniors or something uh -huh. would use this. And then that would or be with uh, a couple of teachers, maybe. Yeah, if you could imagine that. Mm -hmm. Um. So, and some of the thinking about that is, I mean, there is a bottom line. We do have to start thinking about how we're getting this stuff paid for. Right. Because the AI is not free. And, you know, we should stop giving away things for free, right? Uh -huh. In some way. Um, but we could be more organized then about the TD around it. I mean, mm -hmm. you and I could do that in your school. Uh -huh. We could think about that. Um, um. But the yeah, school I mean, would, would get a contract, it. yeah. So does it have the yeah, capacity ahead. for, you know, like one class to be on there and and not to? Oh, yeah, no some, problem. No problem. Because sometimes yeah. they'll do it and like some kids will be like, oh, it's, it's still spinning. Um, no, I don't think that's a problem. Okay. No. I mean, it's, no. Uh, I... I can say that and then it will be, right? But I don't think so. There's Do you no know reason. If it's, does there's it matter no reason what browser? Kind of uh, no. Okay. Doesn't matter. No, no, it doesn't matter at all. Okay. Um, now, there are times when OpenAI is down, right? And it spins then. Uh huh. Okay. And, and there were also. So there were contexts. At this point last year, we were like, if you had more than a paragraph, it would spin, or and more than three paragraphs, it would right. spin. Okay. Right. We don't have those context problems are gone. You can, okay. You can put like a hundred pages up now. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I think that's right. So. And Marina has has her own answer, and I won't repeat it. Or, I mean, or what's that? But, what's, 
No, no, and you're not the only one. Let me let, let me say it from another. There, I, I'm running into teachers who are saying, "Hey, I'm really excited about this. I want to do this. I'm not sure the teacher. I'm not sure I can get three teachers together in my building to do this right now." Um. Or. Um, when I rolled this out to my uh, teachers this summer, um, mm -hmm. you know, one common question is, what does this do that uh, chat GPT doesn't do? Okay. So you need, right. And I could, I could answer that right now, but you need to be confident and be able to answer that too, right? Because mm -hmm. um, you need to be able to sell that to your colleagues. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, should we, <laughs> is there an elevator pitch? So, yeah. So should I do that or should I, so uh, it would be helpful. But, okay. I will. I think uh, the major issue is Paul, okay, like yeah, data yeah. privacy and security like that. That's like one thing that like kids, students on what age is it for chat DPT? I forgot. 18. Yeah, so I know in New York, like they're, like they're probably not signing the privacy data privacy agreements and stuff like that. No, they're not. You no, know, I would think that's like the big thing. Like you know, if if the writing partner is able to ensure that you know another data is being used. Yeah. That and so, that I mean, it's private. Yeah. That, that is a selling point. Right? Well, I mean, I've. I've said that, and then a comeback is like, well, I don't really care if ChatGPT scoops up my thoughts about the Great Gatsby, you know. But they need to. <sighs> well, I'm just saying that's. Uh, yeah. Sometimes Wait, people will say students I, say that, or work. or teachers say that. Um, probably it was teachers as a hypothetical in a conversation. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. But I agree. I think the privacy is a huge deal for sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, there's, so we the, do... there's, a, there's ethical elements to all of this too. Right. So like that's, that's important for young people to learn if they're going to engage in this type of technology. So it'd be important for educators to know. <laughs> to, yeah. I mean, you know. I'm looking at it from an administrator who's going to shell out some money and they're like, kids are already using stuff anyway. And we can we can clamp it down or whatever. Like, what is this offer that they're not already getting wherever they're getting their stuff? Let's say some administrator. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because one of the things that I say is like I think it's more it's more transparent, like what you're asking it to do, and what we're asking it to do is like pedagogically sound. You know, like that's, this is, we're so, trying to map good writing instruction into AI. Mm -hmm. But then a comeback would be, well, can't you just do that in ChatGPT? Um, um, no, you and, can't. And I'll I just mean, say well, one how more thing. You? Yeah, go, go ahead. Yeah. The, the other thing I'll say is we're trying to teach kids, you know, like they're going to be using AI. And so they should have some agency over the writing of the prompts. But what I've been doing seems to be like, I'm doing the prompting and they're going to use it. And is there a space for kids to do a prompt? Would they care enough to want to do it? I'm just spitballing questions right there. Yeah. So let me try to pull. What I find myself saying <laughs> is there are three things that get me excited about this. One is that um, we are bringing to life Peter Elbow's notions and other people, you know, the intellectual frameworks around writing mm -hmm. um, that we know work and, and had been researched and, and well-developed. And we're able to put those frameworks into AI and control AI um, in ways that you cannot do on, on the off-the-shelf platforms. Okay. So let's say that's point number one. Yep. So 
and and I remember like the writing project would always use uh, like uh, Linda Fredericks and their company to kind of do um, the research. Mm -hmm. Is there a place on writing partners that kind of points to some of that research? Well, C three WP is exactly that. Yeah, that's well researched. I, but like, um, sh should there be point? something that says like, here's the research? That's a good point. Yep. Um. So I'm with you on point number one for sure. But we need to make it visible. That's great feedback. I think yep. so. Yeah. Why is yep. this yep. good stuff? You um, know it is. Okay. Um, point two is what you just said. And I'll, put, I'll throw a school and a teacher into one category here, or a district. You can make your own, or, or uh, right? So you can mm -hmm. go in and say, okay, these, these, just like we talked about, these C3 WP ones are great, but I want to adjust them like this. Or a school could say, here are the four things that we're going to emphasize this year. And you could make writing partners for those four. So there's alignment possibility, mm -hmm. right? That we, that a school and or a, a group of teachers or a district even could build into writing partners. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Yeah. And, that, and then push back. Yeah. What yeah. if someone says, but magic school does that already? Um, they I do, don't know but they do actually. <laughs> yeah, there are tools that can do that. Um, the um, yeah, I think, and and this gets into some ongoing dialogue that Dave Cole and Bob Montgomery and I have had around bots and um, the way we manage to have writing and the, the, the stuff next to it. So I think we're straying from point two here, but. <laughs> yeah, got it, but, I, I just tossing it out. Yeah, no, no, um, which is fine. But I think, so I don't wanna ever, I mean, I will in my own life and in my dark conversations and and there is plenty of literature around there who that are questioning bots and the and the effectiveness of those in the classroom. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have we're not we are different than bots. So I just want to say that we it's a form factor that a group of teachers have created. Um, it's built on top of a, an effective tool already where we're doing digital dialogue around text, right? Mm -hmm. Annotating text where, um, so kids are gonna be able to give their comments, teachers comments, and then inside of that, there will also be some AI comments. So it's that mm -hmm. looping between the human and the, and the AI that I think we do more effectively than some of the other programs. Sure, and and I think the option to not use AI is also mm -hmm. pretty powerful too. So it's not the default. Um, I also I just thought of the tagline "We're not bots." I think would be uh, should be on the site somewhere. You know? <laughs> okay, I, yeah, I don't. Yeah, fine. I. <laughs> And that, but then the third point is the agency point. And we see this so deeply in Jill Sadronsky's classes, but also, um, and, and they, they look at the teacher, you know, writing partners that they get and they say, that's fine, but I want to do this. And they go immediately and make their own writing partners. And that's, that's become such a, a practice in her classroom. Mm hmm so that she will say, a kid will come to her and say, I finished this draft, what do you think of it? And she'll say, well, what do you want? What kind of feedback do you want? And she'll say, go build a writing partner and get that feedback and then come to me with the feedback and your paper and we'll talk, right? Mm -hmm. So that agency is amazing, I think. And like the metacognitive process a kid has to go through to build that writing partner that's awesome. And I, I wish. <laughs> and uh, your, your kids will do that too. Yeah. I think. Um, the, um, what, what do I think about that? Oh, I, and, and, and the stuff I write about this, I use words and others do. Um, rapidly author. Um, the site, you can rapidly author. You can go up, you know, make a writing partner and 
in five minutes, create a writing partner, test it out on your writing. Now, it may not be good enough yet. You may have to iterate. And then you, like Aditya says, I said to Aditya one time, and then you look up and you've missed dinner. He said, no, I look up and I've, and, and it's the morning. <laughs> it's, okay. yeah, so you, right. you, you can get sort of obsessed with the process, but, but I, yeah, the real agency that it gives kids is amazing. Now, there are other sites where kids can build bots, I guess, but I don't see anybody emphasizing that. So, uh -huh. Yeah. So, I, again, I don't, that's not an elevator pitch, but unless it's a really tall building. <laughs> but, if, but if you can hit those three things, I think, I think that's what we're after. We're after the, the research-based, you know, decades of practice, writing project, knowledge of writing. We're after districts and teachers being able to um, make something themselves and use it across classroom classes. And uh -huh. we're after students then taking it and making it their own. Uh -huh. it, you know, and you can see sometimes those, the, the, the example I always like is, we, we often say, give me three positives and two negatives. Uh -huh. <laughs> and they're like, you know, I don't want the three positives. Just tell me what to fix, right? Mm -hmm. And so they build one like that, right? Mm -hmm. But our ours still sits there, and they can use it. <laughs> but theirs sits there too. And just to 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 lay it out, when a kid creates one, only they and the teacher can see it. Um, then the teacher can make it available to the whole class. And then you come to me and we make it available to the whole group, right? So that's uh -huh. sort of a, a slow release process that way. Mm -hmm. All right. So, yeah. But um, I'm just taking some notes myself. Good. And here's what, and I think trying to pull back and do a little, be more meta here for a second. The conversation you and I just had, and I've had with Marina, and we have with Jill. Anyway, there are a dozen teachers out there who will understand and have enough practice with us and trust with us in our community that can have this conversation with us. But it's you then need to take it to your people, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe we need a seminar that just does that, right? Like, how can you? Be confident enough in what we're doing that you could take it to your people. Because, mm -hmm. um, Chris, even some of the things you said earlier where, hey, maybe you could put put in chat, chat maybe ChatGPT does this well enough. Um, I, I don't trust it at all, you know? I mean, we're, go we're doing something very different than ChatGPT do does. We're going in with our prompts. And we're eliminating all of that corporate um, programming that they've done to get the, the, from their model to their product, right? And, and we're saying, no, don't do that corporate thing. Instead, do this educational thing that will help our students. Mm -hmm. But I, that's mostly, I think most people don't believe me when I say that, though. <laughs> mm. Well, I think in my yeah. own mind, I'm not sure what corporate programming is, though, because I don't, I guess. Yeah, yeah, how do I say that then? Um, but anyway, I do like the... They, they generalize they, things. They, 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 wait, wait, go ahead. Yeah. They, here, here's one example. You know, if you, if you press it, it always says positive stuff, right? Uh-huh. So that's programmed in, right? Um. It tries to eliminate all bias and everything else, but anyway. So they do a lot of work between the model and, and what and, and the chat GPT thing that comes out. Yeah, I could I could do some more investigation into exactly what that looks like. Yeah, I think that would be good to be able to articulate. Here's, but do you do you, sorry and, and I say the time, but do you do you Marina and I had talked about this? Do you remember, I think it was Microsoft, right? Their their image creator was creating, um, 
they put in to correct bias, they put in all of this extra stuff in the prompt when you make your question so that it ended up having like African Americans in Nazi outfits. Oh. <laughs> That's so, that was that was Google. That was That was Google. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's an example. So they try to fix it, right? Mm -hmm. And and sometimes they get it right and sometimes they don't. But they're really they're fixing it toward a general audience. They're not fixing it toward classrooms. And mm. we're we're taking <clears throat> the sort of raw stuff and fixing it through our prompts. If our prompts suck, then they're not going to get stuff back that's good. But if mm -hmm. our prompts are detailed and thoughtful, then it will do much better than you could get out of the stuff that's off the shelf. But I know I'm just preaching when I get to that. So I don't know what. Well, I mean, yeah. I just have to be able to articulate it. Yeah. And because, you know, people have a pretty short attention span and they're pretty, as soon as you start yeah. talking about AI, people get topped out pretty quick. So yeah. uh, it's for my own benefit to, to think about those things and to be able to, to have an elevator pitch, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but I do okay, think this that, is helpful, but go, you, I do think on the site, there should be something fairly prominent that says this is built on, you know, established research. And here it is, folks. No, I don't know. Um, I mean, it is here, but it's we, we move it down toward the bottom. Well, um, yeah, I, as long as it's it's somewhere, I guess. And it, this, I'm not it's, saying it's, it's, it's this. I don't know if that makes it clear, though. Domain expertise uh, created by writing this. Uh, yeah, I mean, I get I, it. We could we could say that more clearly. Well, there could be a link maybe to something. Yeah, think, yeah, because the people I think the people that make these types of decisions, that's the stuff they they want to look at. Because especially if it's something that like you know a couple of people on a leadership team, a board of education needs to look at, they're going to want to see the credibility behind it. So I think that's a good, mm -hmm. a good addition. Great. Yeah. I, even in, you know, in those conversations, I often try to turn it around to them and ask them, what are the, what are the writing um, goals for, for your school or your district this year, right? Um, and and to make clear that we can make writing partners that will emphasize those goals, right? Um, and, and usually, they are based on some research practice in the background, right? Mm -hmm. Now, Marina, if they come and say it's writing revolution, I'm not sure what to do, but. <laughs> All right. Well, I I mean r respectfully if you're marketing it as a responsive and personalized writing AI assistant, then it should be available to those things too. Yeah, and I'm thinking people who yeah, you're not talking I, I, to. I, go ahead. I want to well, like you do, Chris. Yeah. You you talked about people who when you talk to people, here's what you say. It's like I'm talking about people who might be perusing the site and are on some curriculum committee, um, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. you just want to have something for them to take to the superintendent and, and say, like, really, it is research backed. And and the C3WP stuff is good. And and I think references to Peter Elbow, you know, that's Yeah, that's I fun. mean, this this list that we have here, the say back the deeping dive, yeah, we could actually cite this stuff. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Um, All right. So my next, next yeah, move well, your next step yeah. is because I'm going to have some grandkids coming over for a sleepover here in a little bit. Um, that they, like um, I'm going to try to see if I can map like editorial op-ed writing onto the C3WP. Right. And I will use the um, journalism, no, the writing your future template kind of as the um news right. writing group exactly right yep and i'll i'll do some improvements here and there cool, cool. yeah because i'm actually um 
the one thing I, I think in the, the past, what I've had a problem with was I start the AI too late in the process. And uh -huh. so the, they're already like, they're busy people and they're like, crap, I thought I was done with this thing. You know, it, it didn't come in at the right time. And, and I also want to integrate it with the human first and then the artificial and human then artificial. So it's partly planning and I need to get on it early to do it right. So that's why next week is like planning time. Cool. cool. All right. And uh, if you think of the three teachers who want to do this, you know, <laughs> do you, is there any possibility your school could do something or do you know? Do they have AI they're already using or? Um, I'm not asking uh, you to say. I know, I guess, you know, that yeah. there's a couple of Brian's I teach with that you've worked mm -hmm. with before. Um, one of them I think would be, uh, be interested. Um, and there is another guy who uses, I think like chat GPT as a model for, um, just like he'll do his own experiments in front of the kids and stuff. So it's mm -hmm. possible. Uh, well, I think one for sure I could uh, convince to, but okay. um, yeah, I'll talk to him. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. All right. Great, Chris. Good to talk to you, Marina. Again. Thank you. Yeah, this was really helpful. Um, yeah, <laughs> just kind of talking through the, the talking yep. points. Yep. Cool. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Good night. Turn it off.